bring them out, bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for Bring Them Out with your hosts, Joel Richardson and Alan Hill. <laughs> Hey, everybody, we're here at the Sunnybrook Ballroom inside the Speakeasy for another episode of Bring Them Out. I'm Alan Hill, here with Soul Joel himself, Joel Richardson, and uh, tonight we're flying solo, buddy. Solo. No guests. We're going we're gonna to get into a little bit about you, a little bit about us, Yeah. followed by a little bit of uh, show etiquette. Yes, yes. We're going to yeah. talk that topic, yes. It, because sure. uh, we've had a couple of wild ones recently. <laughs> yes, we have, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been interesting. It does happen from time to time. Yeah. I, uh, I don't understand, like... And actually, uh, John Zim mm-hmm. has been our uh, security guy. Oh, John's uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, John's awesome. And uh, just going behind the scenes, and, and he just said, what needs to be done is we need to have, this is what we can't, like a sign, basically. The, yeah, the posters. I was so happy to see those posters. And he puts one on stage that said, listen, pictures are allowed, no video of any kind. Yeah. And even though it's like, it's illegal in life. Like, remember when VHS, because you and I are, are, you know, around the same age, we can relate that. It's like, FBI warning. Totally. FBI totally. warning. Yeah, beginning of every VHS. You'd be like, oh, I didn't know you couldn't record. You're like, really? Right. Where have you been for the last four decades? Right, right. Like, it's insane. Yes. But, you know what? Can't assume. You know, we we now have the sign up. Then we take it down off it's the also, stage. It's also the last thing you see right before you walk into the Melody Room. Not only on the stage, it's right there in your face when you walk into the, the door. You can lead, lead a horse to water, but doesn't mean they're going to drink. Or think. Or think. <laughs> drink or think. <laughs> so uh, the guys, the whole crew said it's a lot easier with those signs now. Mm-hmm. Because no one can say they didn't see At it. At least there's a, a precedent. And uh, honestly... I used to do it when I went on stage, mm-hmm. and you see in the video of this show, I'm, I'm trying to hype the crowd up, and I'm like, and by the way, no video, and you could just see. It's it's it just doesn't work in that spot, right? Yeah, yeah, it just, it's it's a, it's a momentum killer. Momentum killer. Yeah. You could just feel the energy being sucked out of the room. Right. I'm the anti Viagra. <laughs> The great deflator. <laughs> All right, take it easy. <laughs> All right, since Joel brought it up, I'm glad someone has now addressed the big elephant in the room. <laughs> but yeah, no, it just needed like I, it's not it's not like you said it's not that spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm there, I'm there to make the host job a little easier. Yes. Because people literally from New York to L. A. They've been coming to our shows, going, "These crowds are great, and we appreciate that." And I, and I say this, uh, and I got this line from James Mattern. You guys give us energy, we'll give you energy right back. Oh, that came from James. Are you down oh, with that? It, yeah, yeah, because cool. he's the best. Like, that line is just the best. It's a great line, dude. Just to say it right before the show starts. and Because yeah. it is. It's an energy exchange. You set up, I've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of comedy, and I've, I've seen a ton at your place. But before I found you, I've seen it at a lot of other places, too. And uh, you, you get the energy right for a show better than anybody I've right. ever seen. You know what I mean? Like you, it rolls right in to the host, rolls right into the feature. Boom, 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 boom. Here comes the headliner. Another great night at Soul. Well, Coast. it's funny because we went to Doug Key's uh, Rogue Island Rogue Comedy Island. Festival. Yeah, yeah. My, my sister uh, helped him run it for a few years. Cool. And we went up there, uh, and and he comes over to me. He goes, "Do you want to bring me up?" I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Not gonna do a spot, but I'll. I'll uh, I'll kick the tires a little for you. That's right. That's yeah. right. I, I went up there and dude, it destroyed. That's awesome. And like loved it. And it was like, but I I was like, I love being the hype man. That's so cool. Dude. It's yeah, it's a thing I love. You got to get a big clock to put around your neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor, flav. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of things you love. Yeah. You your love of music. Oh yeah. And uh, I heard there's a a big Grateful Dead story. Well, so love of comedy, <laughs> love of music. Yeah, so every yin needs a yang. My love of music led me to uh, the. I got my driver's license at sixteen. I okay, nineteen seventy one Ford LTD. Yeah, it's about as long as the Batmobile. You know what I mean? Oh boy! And <laughs> so me and four buddies, nineteen eighty six Dodge minivan. Since we're comparing big <laughs> sizes. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, four cylinder woodside paneling. Oh, I know the woodside. But my mom had one of those bad yeah. boys, dude. Yep, yep. All right, so uh, oh, that's great. That's yep. great. 
So yeah, we uh, we decide we're gonna skip school, go see uh, the Grateful Dead. I've never driven my car outside of Lancaster since I got the my driver's license, and the, so the first move okay. is to go to the Spectrum to see the Grateful Dead. Wait, then and now, right? <laughs> yeah, right totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> this is when I could still drive on the highway. By the way, that's oh, a boy. weird story to some people that know me. <laughs> <laughs> so we hop in. We get there at noon. Okay. For an eight o'clock show. Oh. All right. Some call that a full shift. Yeah. yeah. Now. Because it's the Grateful Dead, we're not the first people there. All no. Right? Yeah, because they travel with a caravan of, back then, they traveled with like a caravan of, of hippies and dropouts. You know so what I mean? So people potentially got there the night before? Probably the probably they're rolling in. Like, they pro, uh, like from what I always gathered, I never did the hardcore roll with the hippies tour. You know, I yeah. went to dead shows and fish shows, but I never did that. Um, there would be, they'd stay like a campsite. You know what I mean? They'd yeah. get halfway or th- as far as they could overnight, stay at a campsite, and then roll into the parking lot as soon as they were legally allowed the next day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the hardcore ones are setting up their wares and setting up what they call Shakedown Street, which is basically- Shakedown Street. Shakedown Street. They're in the middle of doing that when you arrive. Correct. Okay. Correct. So now, what's this? Because I'm not- yeah. So shake- my, my first concert was Boys to Men. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different So scene, and that was with my mom and my two sisters. So <laughs> our experience were a little different. You probably weren't hearing the siren call of nitrous popping all over the parking Just lot. Just having a couple of- <laughs> 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 yeah, No. No. We weren't, we weren't whipping it good. <laughs> whipping it good. We were not. <laughs> Life's a box of chocolates. <laughs> That's what we were doing. Oh, shit. That's very yeah. well. You guys like some pop? We're treating like the movies. <laughs> so, so, so we get Shaking there. it down. What does that mean? Okay, so what it means is the, the hardcores of travel, there's probably, back then there was probably a subsect of somewhere around a thousand to a couple thousand people maybe. Maybe I'm, not, I'm making up numbers here. But there was a decent amount of people that just toured with the dead wherever they went. These, not enough for a town, went. but it's a solid borough. Yes, exactly. Solid borough. So these cats would roll in. They would all park in the same section of the parking lot, and they'd all throw out their throw rugs and put out their stuff they were going to sell that day. And you could find everything to get by in the world on yeah. Shakedown Street. Like a hotel that has extra toothbrushes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, what did sir. you forget? <laughs> <laughs> so you'd roll down this, this Shakedown Street. Oh, I didn't know I needed mushrooms. <laughs> but yeah. since they're on the pizza... We'll take it. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> Veggie burritos in what? excess. Uh, grilled cheeses to be had aplenty. Um, all the drugs you could so you ever some possibly imagine. Yeah, right. We had caterers. It was fully catered. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it was interesting buying a grilled cheese from a guy who obviously hadn't bathed in three weeks. But you, you, you don't. <laughs> This was pre-COVID, baby. Nobody thought much about it back then. All right. <laughs> a, a little heads up on someone who just ate. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> you would not survive long in a Grateful did Dead you, parking did lot. Did you wash your... Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, right. doesn't matter, bro. Don't even bother asking it because yeah. the answer is no. <laughs> I haven't washed my hands since Oklahoma. <laughs> a bath for these cats was just putting on as much patchouli as they had left that day. <laughs> Look. Yeah. So... Okay. So we get in. Shakedown Street's being set up over there somewhere in the parking lot. We're over here. Some dude comes by and offers to sell us acid. So, of course, I said yes. Just another Saturday. <laughs> Just another Saturday, baby. No, one more Saturday night. Anybody that knows it dead. Um, that's a Grateful Dead song. Okay. So um, <laughs> I'm just punching up your story. <laughs> Keep it coming, baby. Keep it coming. I don't do acid. I don't get the joke. But anyway, <laughs> back to you, brother. So <laughs> I can drive on the highway, though. <laughs> not stick shift. <laughs> got me beat there in spades. Yeah. So uh, so it's now like 12:30, and I've got two hits of acid in me. All okay. Right? Whoa. And, yeah. And <laughs> my buddies and I are all we're doing our thing, and. Uh, <laughs> And like I was mentioned before, no bands have taken the stage, but there's music playing. There is music up plenty going on up here, brother. <laughs> so, oh boy! <laughs> so now all of a sudden the parking lot's filling in, the acid's starting to kick in, and uh, <laughs> and all of a sudden you start hearing psst, psst, all over the place, which is the siren call of nitrous that I was mentioning earlier. Okay. So nitrous is huge at, at hippie shows, man. Yeah. They, they call it hippie crack. Okay. Like cats calling. Yes. Yes. So you hear that sound and people start r- running. Okay, my buddy loved nitrous, so he's like, "Let's go." I had never done nitrous. I was 16. I'd never tried nitrous. I was like, "All right, why not?" Wow, I have two hits of acid in oh. me. Let's try nitrous for the first time. You're 16. 16 years two old. Two hits of acid. 16 years old. Two hits of acid. Yo. Yeah, buddy. That is going I hard was, in the yard. I, uh, yeah, I, I went hard as a teen. I okay. went very hard as a teen. And <laughs> so, uh, 
So we're tracking down this this uh, this nitrous, and we we get balloons. Well, the way it works is it's like a giant dentist tank, okay? And uh, you get you pay like I forget what it was back then. It was probably two or three bucks, and uh, and you get a giant a balloon this big that you just suck in like you do like you do out out of a whipped cream can or whatever people are familiar with. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar. <laughs> okay, right on. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no ice cream, but give me the Sunday. <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. <laughs> so, I uh, we we find a little spot to to sit down in the. We're just sitting on the macadam in the parking lot, okay. right? And uh, and I do my first hit of nitrous ever as I'm peeking on two hits of acid, and I'm telling you, I saw freaking God or heaven or something, man. I was like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. You know what I mean? And I'm is like, that Janis <laughs> Joplin. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is setting. <laughs> So I'm lying like a chalk outline in the parking lot with his balloon, like, you know, just, I mean, and most people do these balloons in like a, a minute or two. Mine took like half an hour because I was just reveling in this thing. Now, in reality or, or what it appeared? That's a good question. Okay. Okay. Not 100% sure, but it definitely, it definitely took longer <laughs> than your average balloon. Can I get back to you balloon. on that, man? Yeah. <laughs> Let me refer to the footage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have phones back then. There is no, no footage. Thank goodness. Yes. So, so I'm sitting there enjoying the very last bit of my balloon. I take the last hit. <laughs> the bit of your balloon. That was a nice little, high, yeah. little uh, alliterative. Punny. Nice, nice, nice. So I take the last hit. I stand up, and this dude comes walking towards me. He's got a fistful of empty balloons, like empty balloon between every finger, right, and multiple ones, okay? And I mentioned they call this, sh this shit hippie crack, okay? Mm -hmm. This is why. He's got... All empties except one that's got maybe two hits left in it, something like that. Like, it's mostly an empty balloon, but there's a little bit of air. It's still in there. And he comes up to me, and he goes. I was like, what, bro? Like, I mean, I was like. Wait, this is a random guy, or this is your friend? Random dude. Random dude. Okay. Random okay. dude. Just okay. some dude in the parking lot, yep. right? In which there's now 15,000, 20,000 people floating around, right? right? And uh, prior to that, you had not exchanged Zero contact, zero anything. He just yep. basically wandered up as I was finishing my balloon. Okay. And he went right into his little <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. I said, what, man? He goes, <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what you're trying to tell me, man. And he tried one more time, yeah. right? And <laughs> It appears you sound like you're about to poop your pants. <laughs> yeah, constipated, bro. Yeah. And <laughs> so... Uh, so after the, the last attempt, I said, listen, man, I'm really sorry, but I can't understand what you're saying. I, I have no idea. I, I can't help you. He goes, sucks the last bit out of that balloon. Hey, bro, you know where I can get my nitrous tanks filled? Shut up. That's why they call it hippie crap. He was so fucked up from doing this shit on tour all the time that his motor skills were and his speech pattern wasn't working without hitting it. Pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. What? Hippie crack, bro. That's what nitrous will do to you long term. Oh, boy. Yes. So that's part one. Now, then. Dude, because I, <laughs> like, this is like, <laughs> this, no, this, the crack for me was, I don't want this story to be over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, there's got to be more to this, man. You haven't even gotten into the show. Dude, and this short story is not even going to take us to the show. Okay. Because this, I mean, I was. <laughs> you didn't have tickets? I was, I did. Oh. I did. We rolled in without tickets, but I got them from a scalper. Got it. And they were the actually. Next, the next blanket over. Yes, yes. And they were legit, and we were able to get in, luckily, because we could have gotten scammed. Easy, man, because I was so out of it. Yeah, yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. So Nitrous Guy moves along. I told him I couldn't get fill his tanks. He moved on and tried to communicate with the next person, right? And, uh. So we decide, my buddy Mike and I decide to, that it's time to go check out Shakedown Street, all right? See if we want to buy anything from anybody. Yeah. And this is where I heard the best sales pitch of my life at 16 years old. The Grateful Dead Flea Market. Yes. It's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. So, and I was in sales. I sold, I sold houses from 18 to 23, um, and I know a lot of successful salespeople. Right. Nothing will ever beat the sales pitch I heard on Shakedown Street at the Spectrum in the 1980. Okay, so this is the spectrum. Because so, don't the they normally spectrum, yeah. like to perform at outside venues? Well, you, you do what you got to do in the winter. 
Gotcha. Right? So the dead would come and do, they would do like seven shows in a row or something. You know, they're like, like there's certain acts like Springsteen, the dead, the, nowadays Fish. Fish just played 13 straight days in a row at Madison Square Garden. Right, because they, they were trying to beat Billy Joel's record. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Because norm- typically they're not like a, a city, let alone New York City. Mm-hmm. Artists. Correct. Correct. They're not thought of as such. Yeah. yeah but they are. They're more upstate New York, Woodstock. Yes. Let's hang yeah. out in the woods. Right. Let's have a festival with 100,000 people and everybody gets naked, you know, for six hours a day. Yeah. So so we hit Shakedown Street, right? And I'm just like, like, you can't, it, it's really hard to, to impress upon you the experience of walking down Shakedown Street at a Grateful Dead show in the late 80s, early 90s when you're on all kinds of drugs and words are just flying. Like, people are... You're walking everywhere you walk. You're hearing doses, shrooms. Everybody's just whispering in your ear the drugs they got. You know what I mean? I got doses. I got shrooms. Hash over here, man. You need any blow? What's up, man? You know, <laughs> you know. And it's just, whew, I mean, no matter where you go, it's a constant stream of it, right? So we get to shake uppers, down downers. You're just trying to get even, Steven. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to have a good time and see the show, baby. Let's go. So, uh, so we're walking down, and here comes the best sales pitch I've ever heard in my life to this day. Nothing, I don't think anything's ever going to top it because I'm almost 50 now and nothing's come close. Guy is, I hear, liquid acid, liquid acid. And uh, now, I was taking what's called blotter acid, which is what liquid acid put onto a sheet of paper, okay? And then you buy that from a dude who's been carrying that around for three weeks, right? So it's somewhat diluted by the time it gets to you. Even yeah. if it's good, and it was, but even if it's good, it's somewhat diluted. You bake some cookies, you put them out on the wax paper, let them dry. Boom, boom. This is like eating the cookie dough raw. Okay. All right? So he's selling liquid acid. He's got a big vial of liquid acid. He's going, liquid acid over here, liquid acid over here. So I go to like a moth to a flame, right? And he looks like, probably like I do now, only he's still got his hair and it's down to here. Yeah. Right, beard down to here. You know what I mean. He looks like he's a thousand years old, and he lives Barber, on top of a not mountain. Not the flea market. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing to barter, man. <laughs> Nothing to barter. <laughs> so I go. I me and my buddy go over to this guy, and he hits me with this line that I'll never forget. I said, "What's the deal, buddy?" He goes, "Son, for ten dollars you can meet Jesus. Fifteen, you can beat him in poker." What did 20 get you? <laughs> I wish I'd asked. I really wish I'd asked. <laughs> Trying to scrounge up a couple of five spots. <laughs> oh, my God. What was your answer? Uh, my answer was my buddy who was, a, you know, he had his issues and, you know, he, he had his struggles with drugs along the way. He pulled my ass out of there and said, you don't need any of that. And he probably, you know, he could have saved me from a bit of an episode because doing a handful of liquid acid at 16 years old would not have been the best idea. No. You know? Yeah. But the sales pitch, oh, he could have sold me anything with that line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, now that was all by 4 o'clock. Okay, so that's what I was, I joked around about the sun setting. <laughs> but I didn't know what what time this was. It was all in the afternoon. We still had three hours, three or four hours. It was, I, can't, I can't remember if the show was seven or eight. It was one of the two. It always is, right? So... We had three or four more hours, you know what I mean? We still had to get our tickets. We hadn't gotten our tickets yet, which we eventually accomplished. We had to wait in line for two hours. There was a crazed hippie who tried to uh, break through the gate. You know, he dived, dove into a net and got a- attacked by multiple security people. Yeah, it was wild, man. Now, now you say you do what you had to do. Now, so this is the winter time because it was at the spectrum? This was like early fall. So it was okay. like, I want to say it was like maybe late September, early October. So you're not and really nice worried about day. dehydrating? No, no. Yeah, it wasn't one of those type of days, thank goodness. Okay. Because yeah, 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 that's yeah. all I picture is like. And boy, it could have easily happened because I, I wasn't thinking about anything but just rolling with the thing for hours. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Peace. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So that's my Grateful Dead story. Now, dude. who drove? I drove there. My buddy drove back who doesn't do acid. Okay. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> but we oh, we walked out of the show. This is how crazy it was back then, man. We walked out of the show, and there's a crew of people doing lines on the hood of my car. Yeah. Like, there's just, like, the whole hood of my car is just lines. You know what I mean? And I was like, listen, buddy, like, I'm no tight ass, but I got to go. You know, can you at least put it back in your baggie or whatever? You know what I mean? Because I can't sit here and wait for you guys to take turns for half an hour, you know? Right. <laughs> and it was just you and your buddy. No one else went. Two other guys. There were four guys. It was me and the guy that, that kept me from t- doing the liquid acid. 
another guy that the other guy Graham drove. He was the guy that doesn't do acid. Okay. And then another guy Michael Boff who was off doing his own thing the whole time and then found us right before we left. Okay. <laughs> As luck would have it. As luck would have it. Yeah, dude. That's yeah. wild. Grateful Dead in the late 80s, dude. Early 90s. Best concert? Oh, or just God. No, crazy? Best concert experience. Okay. Not the best show. I saw The Dead a few years later, and that was a better show. They were both good shows, but the one a few years later I saw at the Meadowlands was a better musical show. And that wasn't your first concert? No, I saw... We talked about I saw Little right. Feet open up for the Allman Brothers. Right. I had also seen Leonard Skinner. And I think, oh, and no, I guess I think it was just those two. Did you find yourself that. trying to top that after that? Because well, that's like, that's like, that sounds like the Super Bowl of concerts. It really was. In, in many different ways. Like, not just like everything that happened, you, you got obviously a home okay. And, you know, nothing happened. Right. In that nothing sense. Nothing negative, yeah, yeah. Nothing negative, right. Yeah, I got lucky. So you're like, dude, like, like, if, did you write the playbook? You're like, this is what we got to do. I think there's a common sense part of me that knew it was that was a special thing, okay. even at 16. Okay. But also, there was still the dreamer part of me that still tried to chase it for a while. You right. Know what I mean, because like Jerry Garcia, Dream Weaver. Yeah, totally, dude. Like Jerry Garcia died not long, like maybe a three, probably within five years of that show. Oh, dude! I, before I forget, oh, yeah, so go, go, go. I was a, I was a lifeguard, okay, mm -hmm. and I lifeguard at I, I think I told this on the podcast, but the place that I lifeguarded my first job was at Sunnybrook. That's crazy. Not here, but in it's New Jersey. It was yeah. called Sunnybrook. So my life has come full circle, okay. It's incredible. My freshman year in high school, through my freshman year in college, that mm -hmm. summer when I came home. Yeah. So it was five summers, mm -hmm. and I taught swim lessons. But the first year that I worked. And the guy ended up, uh, I, I reconnected with him, and he uh, actually sold me my insurance that I still have to this day for Soldier Old Productions if we ever do a show outside of another venue. Oh, wow. And they're like, you want to do a show here? You got to get insurance. And I'm like, got it. So I kind of, but nice. this guy was our maintenance man, and his, uh, his mom was one of our first grade teachers. He grew up in the town over wow. from us. Great guy, Ben Astalis. Dude, so uh, my, my manager came back like he you know he was working uh, i was also my fourth grade teacher chuck gill okay he came he was working like the night shift that day like you know he came in like three o'clock until he was going to close at nine when the pool closed okay he comes in the, he comes in the room and he goes ben put the flag back in full mass just because jerry garcia died <laughs> you cannot put the flag at half Mass. That's awesome. That's awesome. And he goes, Chuck, he is an American treasure. <laughs> so without without you saying that That's about brilliant. him dying, mm -hmm. I would have never remembered that story. Oh, that is brilliant. And it I was like, that. dude, like it was like, dude, we even though he wasn't our chief, like we it was we we called him Mr. Gill, mm -hmm. but then when we worked with him, it was Chuck. Like he wanted to be like, hey, listen, we're we're peers now, not peers, but he's still our boss. Sure. But we're on like a but, more yeah, it's a different level. We're yeah. a different level because yeah. like we're out of high school or whatever, right. and uh, and we're working together. But dude, it was felt like we were in elementary school all over again. That's I'm bad. about to scold you guys. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Man. Half mass. I love because like I don't like now I fully understand what it means. Like mm -hmm. it's a natural tragedy. Like sure. you know nine eleven or whatever it is. Like you know uh, uh you know a, sh a school shooting. God forbid. Right. They're like they put the flags at half mass. Exactly. Not for hippie. Uh, her Jerry Garcia. <laughs> I love Jerry. But uh, yeah, that, I, I get where he was coming from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, he has his own flavor from Ben and Jerry's, but still, <laughs> still. No, do not put the flag in half. Mass. Oh, it's great, man. That is yeah, great. It, it just it makes me just thinking about it makes me laugh. That is awesome, man. Yeah, That's great. I'm glad that I'm glad that kicked it loose. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Oh man. Um, but yeah, man. That uh, so so uh. Any anything else with those those the that story like? Nah, that's it. Like I, you know, like I uh, the I saw the dead one more time, but it was a totally different show. I was I stayed sober for the whole show because I honestly I can't tell you how good that first show was because I was pretty wrecked. You know what I mean? Right. All I remember is them playing Ico Ico. It's all I remember. Right. Um. And then uh, then I stayed sober for the show at the Meadowlands a few years later, and that one I remember. The Steve Miller band opened up, and Steve Miller then sat in with uh, the dead for one tune, and it was a great show. Well, and uh, do you do you think that? Being at a show like that, it's different in music than it is in comedy, where people are like, you know, free bird, whatever, and and, and they're intoxicated. They're like, and, and at comedy shows, you know, 
normally there's a two drink minimum. We don't enforce it at Soul Joe's. Sure. Uh, but uh, people oftentimes, and, and this is like, I noticed it a lot in Pencil when I was in Pennsylvania. I mean, obviously we're in Pennsylvania now, mm -hmm. but in, in like the rural areas when we did shows, the people who would heckle you the most were the first people at the bar going, "Can I get you a drink?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, isn't that funny? Oh, you thought you were helping me. Right. You weren't. Right. And and I think sometimes it's an innocent thing. Yeah. Where people like I, I don't know if it's just they're not happy with themselves mm -hmm. or with their job or with their home life. Mm -hmm. And and they want to somehow not not take it out, but that's why they come to the show. Right, it's a big. That's why they want to have some big release yeah. or whatever. Right, whatever that is. Yeah. Or or sometimes it's a it, it, it's a, a guy just trying to one up the comics, and, and he wants right. to be a comic. Right. Uh, and in this case, the audience member uh, was a female. Mm hmm But I'm like, dude, like it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. She was dancing, and I thought this was this was incredible, dancing when DJ Bob. Shout out to DJ Bob. Love you, Bob. Yeah, I mean, and he was on his game, dude. He was killing it, killing Saturday. it, killing it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The, the, the week it. before, a lady asked to uh, have him DJ um, her her uh, wedding vows being renewed. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So B Bob's riding a high, feeling good. Yeah, Bob. And I want him to feel good. Yep. But then all of a sudden, it just got worse. Oh, God, so it went bad. from oh, we're just gonna dance to you gotta let the the guys do the, their job, man. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's let's start at the beginning with this etiquette. Yeah, thing, yeah, right? yeah. So one of the things, like what I love about the signs that you did, right, is one of the issues when it comes to etiquette at a comedy club is a lot of people just don't know. Some of some people are fucking assholes, and they're just going to be dicks no matter what. You know what right. I mean? There's plenty of that. You know what I mean? Some people are just going to get wasted and not know better, not be able to control themselves. You right. You know what I mean? That's a, the, nothing that's that shushing them. Yeah. Nothing that they're, nothing's gonna, nothing's going to change it. Nothing's going to change them. Right. right? No but, signs. Right. Yeah. Nothing. Because they're they're probably eight sheets, seven, seven, whatever it is. Exactly. Sheets to the wind. Exactly. They're not reading. The the good thing about the sign is at least you can point to it and say you were warned. Right. Right. You need that, I think. But. The, the people we're trying to talk to, and it's not a lot of the people probably that are going to be watching because the people watching are the hardcore comedy fans that already know better, but um, the, the people we're trying to get are the people that are coming to shows early on. Like, I remember going to a show, and listen, I get, I get this as much as any non-comedian's ever going to understand comedy, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, um, but I remember sitting in one of my first shows, and uh, I, think it was, I think it was Bobby Lee, and... Um, and there was a silence. There was the comedian was you know he's pausing. He was doing the you know he was doing his act. And I remember thinking, well somebody should say something. You know what I mean? And I'm not an idiot. You know what I mean? But I still almost like I didn't do it. I knew I like the better part of me knew better. But a small part of me was like, should I say something here? You know what I mean? Yeah. And if I could do that, then you know what I mean? Then anybody can. You know? And uh, so when you go to a, a show for the first time, you're sitting there and you're thinking, I don't know what to do. Well. That's what we're trying to address. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, you got to roll in. You like, it, like when you put me on the the action news at one time after the Chris Rock slap. Right. And they talked to ask me about comedy etiquette. You know? You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, brother. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was, uh, I was kidding because you didn't ask, <laughs> was awesome. and you definitely you didn't thank me. I had a little edible anxiety too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you'll see in Joel's act sometimes. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so um. But one of the things I talked about on then, and uh, and I believe it firmly, is you gotta. Um, the thing you need to know is, you don't talk unless the comedian talks to you. You know okay. what I mean? Like that's a big thing. Like a lot of times, the comedian will address the person in the front row and say, "What do you do for a living?" They're looking to set something up, which people don't realize. Exactly. They're engaging for a reason. I learned that early on in a, in, a, uh, in my, <laughs> my career. Mm -hmm. But uh, comics would be like, "Why did you ask that question? It has nothing to do with your joke." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh yeah, it's a good point." Like, right, right. So only ask a question if you're using the answer, because they're going to say yes, they're going to say no, they're going to say red, they're going to say blue, they're yeah. going to answer your question. So you better use what they say to set your joke up. Only if it's feeding your act. Yeah. Right on. Right exactly. on. That makes perfect sense. So yeah, man. So you you but other than that, shut the hell up. Right. You know what I mean? There's no like, you know what I mean? If you need to whisper to your friend about, you know, like you know, what time's the babysitter or whatever, you know, you do it in a calm, cool way. Yeah. But other than that, you sit there and you listen. 
Right. You know, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. What yeah. I, and I and I uh, I tell this to all the comics that come here. I don't look at the comics on stage. Mm-hmm. I'm constantly looking at the audience, not in a creepy way. <laughs> I love what because I want I, I first of all I enjoy what I do so I love sitting in the back of the room and watching people enjoy my hard work or our team's hard work yeah. coming to fruition yeah. but also I want to see how the audience is directly enjoying or not enjoying the comics mm-hmm. absolutely and so sometimes like uh, actually were you here at Katie Boyle's show no no I missed it. all right one. so Katie Boyle had three comics including herself that were from Ireland mm-hmm. and then one of them it was uh, the the um, comics wife, oh, uh, Irish American, and she did a character, mm-hmm. almost like an SNL like character. Okay, yeah, and she went on like talking about how Irish she was on St. Patrick's Day, mm-hmm. spilling beer all over the place and making a big scene. And I saw a bunch of the dudes in the audience laughing hysterically, and then all of a sudden look over at their wife, and their wife was like. <laughs> yeah, I can see it, yeah. dude. I can totally like, see it. Yeah, because like, he was like, ha, ha. <sighs> oh, that's cool. And it's like, yeah, no, oh, but not you. Yeah, everybody not but you. you not you. <laughs> because it was literally the day after St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. So it was fresh in everybody's mind. Totally. You know what I mean? And all, all, all the scars were still out oh, on from last yeah, night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is, and she kept kicking her legs really high and doing this whole thing, dancing. And I'm Irish, I'm Irish. She was dressed up and had the hat and the necklace. I saw like the she pictures. Was okay, girl. yeah. Okay. And, and then but all of a sudden, but watching these dudes were laughing hysterically. Like, yeah, I totally know what you're like. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, that's awesome! Dude, that's so great. funny. But I watched them, and I watched the audience for that reason. That's super cool, man. Yeah. That's, and a, that's she. She loved getting that feedback because she's like, you know, sometimes it's like a character like that. Like the audience might not be; they're enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. But I might be like laughing hysterically, like you know, mm-hmm. other comics. But yeah, she was killing. She was killing. That's a really cool perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's but my mom's like. Actually, you yeah, know? yeah, she loves st- watching. She'll, she, I think, she watches the people in the crowd as much as she watches the show. You know, she and also you. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's we, the, that's your story because on the way home, obviously, you're driving home. It takes 50 minutes to an hour, and, and you'd be like, "So, how did you think the show?" And, and she'll go, "Well, I enjoyed watching you, Alan. <laughs> I love how much you enjoyed it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if that didn't answer, but yet answer the question. <laughs> totally, man. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, well, the great thing about my mom is you know when she really likes a show. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, There's yeah. a handful of people that she goes hog wild for, you know? But but uh, that's how I understand how, and uh, not, not to sing out your mom, but white people will let you know mm-hmm. if they like the show. Mm-hmm. They will make eye contact. Uh-huh. They will thank you that, or, or they will uh, they will go, uh, when's the next show? Mm-hmm. How often do you do this? Yeah. Uh, what were those comics' names again? Uh-huh. They didn't like it. It's staring straight down, running to the bathroom, Hustle out hustling out, <laughs> not grabbing any more drinks. So only like, yes. like Monopoly, do not pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars. We're going right to the car. Do you got to pee? No, I'd rather pee my pants. I am heading home. Oh, we great. did not enjoy this at all. Oh, that's great. Man. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that is priceless. Yeah, now, that's funny. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. and 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 that's why. Uh, when, when you're doing a black show, mm-hmm. they also let you know, yeah. but in a different way. They'll let you know at the show. Right, right there and then. Moving in their seats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's funny because I remember being at um at the, uh, I think it was Joe List. It was one of the early shows in, in yeah. Warriorsford, right? And uh, and James, of course, was you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. the host. Right. And uh, he said, you know, he made me laugh, of course. And I was going. <laughs> and James goes, what, are you used to going to black shows, dude? <laughs> Because I move around like a black guy when I'm at these shows. I love, like, I'm all over the place, man. Yeah. <laughs> I loved you in Harlem. <laughs> the Apollo, baby. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We I good? Thought, I thought I yanked out the cord, but I'm, we're good? Yeah. Nice. All right. Sweet. <laughs> shout out to Jesse. Yeah, shout out to Jesse, brother. Yeah. It's a, it's the one guy, because people have actually asked me, like, who are you staring at? I'm like, our one audience member. <laughs> I go because as a performer, it's especially like like when you're at comedy, you could get a read of the room. Mm-hmm. Am I doing well or not? Unless you're a sociopath, <laughs> which exists in comedy. I yeah, know. yeah. Well, they're either empaths or, <laughs> or sociopath. sociopath. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and sometimes they can still be good comics, <laughs> but it doesn't deter you either way. But if you want to know how you're doing, you can look at the room and find out. Yeah. Uh, but with this. 
you're like you're not finding out sometimes ever right you're like oh it's views but people just means people clicked right totally, are they totally. enjoying it okay maybe they've reached out yeah but yeah. you don't know right oh, it's funny to me yeah but know. at least we know <laughs> right at least we got, we got yeah one human read going on <laughs> We got a couple of laugh out louds and smiles. Yeah, man. And from a guy who's doing comedy, that's good. Yeah, exactly. No. Absolutely. Good read. Yeah. Um, so let, let's uh, do some more questions. Oh, you got you want to hit the questions? Nice. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Because I, uh, I enjoy that. Yeah, this is fun. So, okay. Oops. Now, the reason why you haven't seen too many of uh, the readers is because uh, Alan has forgotten his glasses a few times. Every time. Oh, every time. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. I finally remembered, and uh, now you won't see me squint. So, uh, okay, let's see here. Okay, and if I did any of these on the other ones that I forgot, I'm pretty sure we didn't, but just tell me. Um, Favorite movie, start with comedy. And I know you can give me five of them if you want. Oh, dude, uh, I mean, it's tough. But, like, uh, do do we do that one? Did we do that one? I don't think we did, but I don't remember. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, dude, it's funny because I like uh, like I, I want to put these together, but like Patriot slash uh, um, Braveheart, like that kind of like mm-hmm. with uh, Mel Gibson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I also like I love like Goodfellas. Oh yeah, it's much. That's yeah. Number one. For but me. then, but then, uh, like comedy wise, man, I'm I'm watching like uh, like Step Brothers, like uh, um, uh, it's uh, dude, a, a crazy uh. What's the fraternity movie? Uh, oh, uh, old, old school. school. Old school. Yeah, like uh, Wedding Crashers. Yes. Yeah. You're like it's just it's stupid. But Once it's... Will Ferrell broke the the next like four or five movies. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why I always say like Will Ferrell is probably my favorite like. Uh, um, in, SNL in guy. SNL, ca- yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I love like all those movies, but He's like so funny. But then there's like Caddyshack and like other yeah. stupid movies, and you're like it's just. Timeless. I, I like the Caddyshack, uh, the, the vacation movie. Christmas Vacation. That's the movie that we always, my family, uh, kicks off the uh, Christmas season. We watch it nice. after Thanksgiving. Nice. Yeah. Love that. At going into. Yeah. I watch that every year. Yeah. yeah. I have Sa- to. Same question for you. Okay. So, Goodfellas, A number one. If I'm going to, if, 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 if you're, I'm on a desert Not island. Not one A. Yeah. A. <laughs> A number one. A number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, turns out Alan shouldn't have done two hits of acid <laughs> at 16, and that would have been one A. Things come out backwards sometimes, <laughs> or I'm referencing steak sauce. I'm not sure which. Yeah. Um, I'm not mad at you either way. <laughs> My man. So, uh, um, yeah, Goodfellas. Um, I love Scorsese, and I love the Coen brothers. All right. Okay. So, Big Lebowski, Goodfellas are one and two. Okay. Um, and then... Pretty much anything else those guys do. You know, okay. I mean, there's a couple exceptions here and there. They had a couple. Everybody has a stinker or two, but I love Scorsese and the Coen Brothers. In fact, I had a little quick sidetrack. I had the wor- worst. We're doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. The- Long sidetrack. Yeah. So uh, floor is yours. <laughs> worst blind date of my life. And then uh, this will be a question for you then too, if you ever had one. Or first date, we can make it if you didn't have a blind date. So, um. I get set up by my buddies, and I was hesitant to accept it. I, I, I turned down a million of these in my life, and I accepted for some reason. I don't know why. And I get there, and she's nice enough. You know what I mean? But it was obvious we were not a personality match right away. You know, I'm obviously pretty gregarious dude, and she was, like, you know, just very quiet. You yeah. Know, not laughing at anything Which sometimes that could be a match. Sometimes it could. Yeah. But she seemed to be more annoyed with me than anything else. Oh. You know what I mean? Well, I, 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 <laughs> And your big presence. I am a very big presence. Yeah, yeah. If you're annoyed within five minutes of meeting me, it's not going to get any better. No. <laughs> so. Sorry, toots. Yeah, that's right. So then it, the idea was we were going to go see a movie. and uh, <laughs> Which she enjoys. She's quiet. Yeah, right. I, I thought, well, this is perfect because this girl doesn't talk. You yeah. know what I mean? She's like, it's also perfect. Alan will shut up. <laughs> I enjoy spending time with you. It's one of the very <laughs> few ways to get me to shut up yeah. or get me at a comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pay the admission. Ask the Masons if I can yeah. be quiet. <laughs> oh, my God. Sidetrack to the sidetrack. Si- sidetrack to the sidetrack. Uh, there, was, there was an event. It was, uh, by the way, the 225th uh, uh, celebration of the Lodge. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the Phoenix wow. Lodge. You know, wow. Shout out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And... I, well, I was gonna say like I am a Mason in New York. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, my dad yeah, was a Mason. Yeah, yeah, and but uh, but we had to come and uh, um, Shannon, 
our uh, Shannon Rossi, our wedding coordinator here, had to come and sh uh, close the doors because she goes, um, I don't know what you guys are talking about out here, but uh, everybody in the ballroom turned their heads when Alan laughed. <laughs> and if anybody hasn't been here, um, th Alan was at least 100 feet from the closest person. <laughs> Probably 300 feet from the furthest person and all that was separating it was a uh, Doors that were open and you're like dude. We, we were fine. They probably couldn't hear anything that we were saying right. But your laugh, your laugh just true just <laughs> Yeah, can't. which in infectious in a comedy show right, or on a podcast not great for opening ceremonies of the Masonic Lodge. Yeah, when uh, <laughs> Guys are getting their awards right. nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. How rude <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> you went inside the comedy room, and then uh, and, and we had to shut the doors. Yeah, man. No, I yeah. had to be shut down. <laughs> yeah. Dude, wild. Oh, my goodness. That was hilarious. So side back to the side track. Okay, so back to the blind date. Now, we're picking a movie. Yeah. Right? And no input coming from her at all. To, you know. Oh, so she wouldn't even talk when you wanted her right, exactly. to talk. Exactly. Like, what movie do you want? Here's like six movies we, that I would be willing to see. So this was first and last date. Correct. Okay. Correct. Never saw her again. Nope. Okay. And <laughs> oh boy. So, so there's a new Coen Brothers movie out. Okay. Um, what the hell is it called? It was the one with Tom Hanks. It wasn't their best movie. Um, the Lady Killers. Lady Killers. And um, but uh, Tom Hanks was really funny, and he did this weird accent. It was, you know, I mean, it's it's, it's amusing in ways. But uh, so we go. She agrees to that movie after not saying anything. I finally say, well, I just picked it. Let's let's see the Coen Brothers. I figured this is a good way to find out if we're gonna. Um, get anywhere because if she doesn't like the Coen Brothers, there's not going to be a second date. Right. No matter what happens the rest but of the But you day. already had a feeling there was not going to be a second date anyway. I was leaning that way hard. <laughs> okay, already. <laughs> it was already a hard lean towards not again. Yeah. Coen Brothers could seal the deal, right? Okay. So we go to the movie. We sit down. It starts. It's seven minutes in. I don't like this. Can we leave? It's the first thing she said since she opened the door. You know what I mean? Oh, boy. I dropped the money. You know what I mean? Like, it's been very unpleasant concessions? so far. Are there concessions involved? There was popcorn and sodas, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm told, I'm, I'm she wasn't getting want. handsy, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I had no doubts about that, believe yeah. me. So, <laughs> seven minutes in, I wanna, I would like, I'd like to leave. I said, well, that's cool. Go ahead. No. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Did you drive together? <laughs> she lived right around the corner. Okay. So, she drove there. Okay. But uh, um, so she had her own car. I wasn't making her walk. Okay. And I lived. So in that sense, you were still being a gentleman. Right. You weren't leaving her stranded. The door was open. Mm -hmm. She can leave. I'm not putting, you know, I'm not making her walk through the city or anything. And I lived only like another five blocks. And I, which the, I was. The city of, city of Lancaster, by the way. <laughs> right. Hard, hard scrabble Lancaster. Yeah. So uh, um, I was more than willing to walk at the end of this to get out of this day. Okay. You know okay. I mean? Okay. So. Uh, she she didn't leave. What? Could you imagine staying after I said something like that? Like I'm not a rude guy. It takes a lot for me to get to that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and uh, and I said, uh, well, go ahead and leave. You know what I mean? Like it's cool. Like I'll stay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she just sat there, got quiet again, and watched the whole movie, hating every minute of it. I'm gathering. You know what I mean? Oh, so she didn't react at all. Nothing. No. Nope. Because nope. it was a comedy, right? It was a comedy. Yes. So there were some points where she should have laughed. There was. I'm laughing my ass off. Okay. You know, there was a lot of, like, it's not, again, not the greatest Coen Brothers movie of all time. Still plenty of funny moments. You right. Know? And uh, um, <laughs> I'm laughing my ass off the whole time. And she's like, for two hours. So then what happened afterwards? We went back. She cooked me dinner. Never said no, a word. No, wait, shut yeah, up. I'm telling you. It didn't shut end. up. It did not end. Wait. It did not end right wait, there. Wait, wait. It's, 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 this is the weirdest part, man. But, uh, no, no, no. But, but, but again, this goes back to you reversing stuff. Not yeah. 1A, A1. Uh-huh. You had, you had movie and then dinner? Uh-huh. No, not dinner not and a dinner show. And a movie. It's dinner and a show. No, nope. it's not a show and dinner. Movie then dinner. Yeah, movie then don't, dinner. Don't tell me what happened next. Was there dessert? Dude, no. And I'm not talking about ice cream. No, there was no dessert. No dessert. I'm t it was weird because she offered to cook me dinner. She said, "Would you you know we want dinner?" <laughs> and I said, "She liked your sass." I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, you know, I don't know why I'm still here, but okay, let's have some dinner. You know yeah. what I mean? So she's cooking up the tuna helper, and. Uh, and I was like, you know what? This is just weird. I tried to talk a couple times, and she just wasn't having it. Did you think she it. was going to poison you? 
It ran through my mind. Did it really? It really did. Because it didn't until this point where you're like, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, it was. It was weird, man. It was weird. I thought there might be a rat, you know, like like the uh, fatal attraction rabbit in the in the, the right, stew right. bowl. You know what I mean? I didn't Spit, know what was going some on. Some eighty cyanide. Yeah, I was I was kicking my own ass for still being there. I couldn't figure out why what I was doing there. Yeah, you'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, finally, and she didn't know I smoked cigarettes at the time. Now I don't. You know, I don't smoke anymore, but back then I did, and I hadn't smoked a cigarette since the date started. I said, I know how to end this. I said, I'm going to go step outside and have a cigarette. She goes, you smoke? I said, yeah. She goes, oh, I don't like that. I said, great. Well, I'll just, I'll just take off then when I'm done with my smoke. And that was the end of the day. Th- and that was it? And that was it. Whoa, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was, never did a blind I was in my 20s. I never did another blind date again. Well, I, I've never done a blind date. Mm-hmm. But, but I will. First date? T- I went out with uh, a, a guy that is not, no longer in comedy. Okay. Uh, he set me up with his sister. Oh wow! Okay. And nervous he, already. He he <laughs> went. No no, it's fine. We before we even uh, uh, ordered dinner, she goes. So you're gonna do this every weekend, meeting comedy. <laughs> now now I, I I didn't have soul Joel's. I wasn't uh, I wasn't even doing it full time yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. It was still like. This is like, when you had the job or post college. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think I, yeah, I was still doing pharmaceutical sales. Okay. It was either right before or right after I quit. Right on. Uh, and walked away, but um, no, no, it was right before. And so I was like, "This is yeah, this is what I'm gonna do." Mm-hmm. Like for you not to even understand that, I'm like, "It's crazy." It's not. I, I'm not. I'm not on the open mic circuit. Like I, I'm doing this full time at this point. This is what I do. This is what I do. And like we hadn't even ordered our meal. We hadn't even like we just we got like oh uh, I'll take club soda with lime or I might have had alcohol at that point whatever but I'm like <laughs> this is this is no good dude bad yeah, start a bad start mm-hmm. yeah I'm like how can I enjoy myself man yeah that's heavy and we're already at dinner so I'm like what am I how am I gonna get out of this did you go see a movie no <laughs> <laughs> dude the best man <laughs> yeah well I think this is it man perfect yeah perfect. For Alan Hill, Soul Joel, we'll see you next time.